Seems uh, it's actually called out by Perks on Euphoria as uh, a very good support at the moment. He gave an honorable mention to both Crown Shot and Dreams. And there's the Nico pick as well for SK. I was expecting the Rise Hover to actually be a lock, not only because I think Rise is a good matchup into the Silas, but to take it away from G2. Because when we think about some of the best Rise players, not only in Europe, but in the world, like you have to kind of bring Caps on Wonder into that conversation. The fact that they would give that over suggests to me that maybe G uh, they believe G2 don't want to go double AP, but I'd be very surprised if they didn't want to just lock that in right now. Well, instead, we're going to see uh, Jarvan taken straight away by G2. You, I mean, you could even go uh, the rise and round out your solo laners here. If you're G2, we tend to see AD carries prioritized a little bit more on this rotation. That's Things true. like the Zaya still available. Rakan still in the pool as well. If G2 want to pick it, Pike up and available as well if you want a bit more flexibility. And the Siva, really reliable champion, slots himself very nicely into pretty much every single team combat out there right now. Not a bad pick there for Perks. Lee Sin, self-made Lee Sin. <laughs> yeah, and we have a Lee Sin maestro here to talk we us do. through it as Is well. Is this another one Benius. where you... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, are you going to do that or what? Yeah, all right, nice one, mate. It's the last one, I so promise. So funny. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one of the cool things uh, I noticed about SK Gaming's draft is I actually think that Nico and Tom Kench are going in the bot lane. Uh, I think this is a duo that we've seen in the past. I believe it was G2 that's played it before. Um, but the cool thing about Nico is that she can be flexed into multiple roles, and it gives you the option to play an AD mid. Uh, so I think SK's draft is still very up in the air. They have a lot of options to where things can go. The only thing I think we can reliably say is that Selfmade will be playing Lee Sin up against Yan Chris's Jarvan, who so far has been on Jarvan duty so far this entire split. So going to be looking to maintain his 100% win record on the champion. I believe we saw Wanda play Jarvan a lot as well. Every now That's and then true, last split. That, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. split. Yeah. Could be a thing, could be. You never know, still a bit of flexibility. There's the Lux removed from the pool by SK. Rise taken away by G2, so wonder where they'll go next with this. Expect maybe another one of those strong solo laners or even an AD carry taken away here by G2. Something they might think works well into the Civet. I think their expectations are that this Nico is in the bot lane. Yeah. Uh, I think that's part of the reason why they want to follow the Sivir as well. Not only, I mean, Sivir is like very high in priority for many pros in Europe right now. Sivir and Zai seem to be the top two. Um, and the fact that they saw the Tom Kench and the Nico, I think that that's the kind of direction they were looking at. And I think that in the event that Nico is bot lane, then uh, the Sivir can do very well into that matchup because you can then spell shield her E, which is really the scariest part of Nico in the bot lane. I wonder whether SK decide to go for that Zyra Khan combo as well now that with the Tom G2. Kench locked, I'd be surprised if they go for the Rakan. Well, this is what I was going to say, right? Oh, Tom Kench top? <laughs> That's not a low maestro. I feel like... That's very true. I, I talked about it before earlier today. Uh, to be honest, it's probably not going to happen. But I would love to see it happen because it is one of those really obnoxious champion picks that uh, maybe if you're going to be a team like G2, you kind of have to play something a bit special. And So it looks like Nico isn't going to go towards nope. that bottom lane. With Crownshot locking in his signature Ezreal, we expect that to be down towards the bottom side. Rakan locked in here for G2. Don't ex don't think that it's going to be Zaya, but when it's G2, their draft can always be a little bit experimental. Instead, they're going to lock in the Victor. Could be top, could be mid, depending on what SK pick. I think SK want the Nico to go into the Silas matchup. We've seen it being picked up as an answer to the champion. Remember that Silas can always steal away the Nico ultimate and offer a lot of value in team fights. But in the early laning phase, Nico can be very oppressive. Uh, and I usually think that the press the attack one is the one they use to ha uh, consistently harass during the early laning phase. Um, but we shall see. It looks like expectations for SK are that the Victor's going up towards the top side of the map and they want to play the cannon into that. Now that this is Nico in the mid lane, do you still think we'll see the on-hit Nico? Because maybe I think not, yeah. maybe AP Nico might be the way to go here. But as you mentioned, stealing that ult for caps, that's a huge thing. I think the big thing for uh, this sort of SK draft is you have to always balance out how much AP do we have, how much AD do we have. Cannon can go AP, can go on hit. Nico can do the same. And then Ezreal can go down that full AP route as well if you get Hextech Gunblade, Ludens. So there's so much flexibility for them. They can kind of pick and choose depending on where exactly they want to send each of these players. And it's depending on each player's play style as well. I will say that I think for SK Gaming, if they do decide to go for the AP Nico mid, it will just give them a lot of team fight power. There's so much crowd control, a lot of area effect damage. I mean, Nico plus Cannon. We saw what Cannon alone did in the last game. If you add that extra bit of crowd control and damage uh, to that uh, matchup, 
then it offers a lot of mid to late game power. Whereas for G2, I feel like that they have a very strong 2v2 mid jungle and their scaling and team fighting is also very, very scary. You've got the Victor, you've got the Sivir, you've got the Jarvan. Uh, definitely uh, a lot of fighting to be expected in this game. That's what I like to hear, Venus. G2 and SK are going to face up on Summoners Rift. G2, of course, undefeated so far in the spring split of the uh, summer split of the LEC, matching Fnatic's record today if they go 3 and 0. Oh, those teams actually play next Friday as well, so that's going to be a very exciting matchup to be sure. For anyone that is a fan of Mike Check, you will be happy to know that G2 do all have matching icons. They've all gone for the void, and that usually means that they want to make their opponents feel very miserable, like there's nothing that they can do being trapped in the G2 void. Bit of fun facts for you as G2 look for a bit of an invade very early on into the game. So quickly before we get into any specific matchups, I want to have a, a look down these rune choices. Unsealed Spellbook for Sacre on the Cannon in the top lane. Glacial Augment for Perian in the mid lane on the Nico. There's also a Spellbook on Dreams. On the other side, pretty bog standard. You know, so, uh, Airy on Wanda. Yankos has the Electrocute for a bit more burst damage. Very common. Uh, we also have the Conqueror on Lee Sin. I'm sure our boy Foxdrop can talk all oh, about yeah. that. Well, those, those are two runes that are pretty interchangeable when you play these like AD Bruiser champions. Yeah. It really just comes down to your personal preference, your play style. As you mentioned, Electrocute is more burst damage, so it's a bit better in that early game to get the extra damage in those ganks. Whereas the Conqueror is much better if you're having more extended fights. And it's also better if you go for a tankier build because you tend to survive longer to get more use out of that Conqueror. So for me, Yankos having that Electrocute, we could just be seeing like a, a Warrior Enchant Black Cleaver uh, Jarvan build, which like, Smithy played a lot at MSI, of course, we don't want to reference too much the team that lost their quickest international finals in the history of League of Legends, but still, it is something that you can play. Yeah, uh, and I do also think that for a Lee Sin running Conqueror, it's super easy for him to get those stacks as well because of the spammability of all of his abilities. Uh, so I think that's really cool. We noticed that that early invade from G2 was basically used to get this vision down. So they have insight into where Selfmade is right now in the jungle. That means that Java can take his time towards the bot side. And he's actually just immediately making his way up towards the top lane to help support Wonder in the event that Selfmade looks for an early again. So a tiny addition to that is SK did the same invade down towards the red side jungle of G2, they put a ward in, but because Mickey took Sweeper, that ward was then cleaned out by G2. They knew that Yanko started at the red, but they then don't see any further rotation. So SK, a little bit more in the dark in terms of jungle of position than G2. Something about this early jungle path thing as well, which you might see in around two minutes or so, is that if uh, Perks and Mickey push out now, if it then bounces back to them at this time, Yankos will be around this side because he went red buff into Krugs, which means that your Krugs is going to spawn around the 420 mark, and it's a really efficient path to go if you're looking to optimize your experience. So it's something that we might be seeing in that bot lane because there is no cleanse or anything like that out of the SK bot lane if Yankos decides to go there in about a minute or so. At the moment, both junglers up towards this top side, self-made. Consistently ganked for his top laner in spring split. Of course, it was Whirlib in those days. Sakurai, the rookie, coming in for this split. Uh, has had a pretty pretty strong performance so far, hasn't really had the chance to shine, but after he was the MVP of the EU Masters, we're expecting quite a lot from the SK top lane. Yeah, uh, and I, it's no real surprise that we see Selfmade already playing around him. Uh, I love the early vision investment up towards the top side of the map, as you see a bit of trading happen down bot. They're looking for a dive onto Sakurai, and that's because Wanda, he was getting a lot of very effective trades in the early laning phase. Uh, Victor can be very oppressive with his Q, and you can just see there's very little that you can do against the E-Harass in lane. Uh, it's very obnoxious to deal with, even though it burns a lot of mana. Um, it's still like, it's very effective at just slowly chipping you out and they're looking for the dive. So Sefmate's just trying to play towards the side here. The teleport coming in from Pyrian. The Sonic Wave's gonna connect, but Pyrian is a long way away from this fight. Yankos forced away, isn't tanking up the tower. Wonder will take the first shot. Sakurai can go in with a flash if he wants, but Yankos has the EQ combo. Pyrian still has a flash of his own, but Wonder and Yankos getting away. Oh. The Tangle Bob connects! and burst blood to SK. I don't even think he was aiming at Yankos there. It just simply happened to be standing in the way. That looked like that was going to be a really rough play for SK, dedicating those resources and not having anything happen for them. Caps free farming in the mid lane, but they do pick up that kill on the end. 
First blood to SK. And the biggest thing is the ward from self made in the tri brush. SK had full information of what G2 were trying to do, and they were able to respond accordingly. A very quick teleport coming out from Pyrian. Self made was lying in wait in the fog of war, allows them to get the turnaround play, and SK draw first blood against G2. Now, we have seen things like this happen in the past. Caps has still got his flash and his teleport, so I want to see how much G2 do around that advantage. We've seen mid laners play into Caps, burn their flash, trying to get a kill, even in a 1v1, getting the advantage, but then Caps and Yankos being able to turn it around because of that summoner spell advantage. Also, remember that the CS discrepancies have built up as well. Even though that TP play was made top, Caps was able to get a lot of farm completely uncontested and. Sakurai, even though he gets that first blood, all it's done is equalize the goals between him and G2. So no real uh, strong early game advantage built up, but here we get to see the replay once again. It's really smart for Selfmade. He reads this play, but he still sits in the fog of war because he wants Yankos to engage with the flag and drag because he knows, yes, that's Jarvan's way to get in, but it's also his way to get out. And it means it kind of seals his fate right here as Pyrian throws out the E. I genuinely don't think he was aiming at Yankos there, but either way, he hits him, and that's first blood. Aim in the general direction and hope <laughs> Just that you throw hit. it out, see what happens. Beautiful stuff from the side of SK. So, putting a bit of pressure onto G2 will cost them a couple summoner spells up towards the top side of the map. Give Selfmade another opportunity to roam up top, look for a play. But speaking of roaming, look at Mickey. Very classic play for him. Level 4 immediately looks for a play around the map. We saw it from Hillasang earlier on. We're also seeing it from Dreams. Want to just be around to help support uh, his team as G2 once again look for a play up top. They know there are no flashes on Selfmade or Sakurai. Here we go. Mickey gonna help out uh, Yankos, or jump to Yankos with the battle dance. Wonder level six, Caps on his way up as well. Now they've spotted him. Now Sakurai does have his ultimate and an ignite. Could be a dangerous dive for G2. You've got to execute this perfectly. There's no TP on the rest of SK, so they can't join the fight. But that's very well played by SK. They're absorbing so much pressure up towards this top side. And meanwhile, Perks is just kind of left in an island down towards the bottom lane. He's forced in a one versus two, which SK are more than happy to reap the rewards from. So G2 fail another early play, and SK just slowly but surely building up a gold advantage. Um, Perks is not too happy about being left by himself, but on the flip side, as far as it goes, he played that one how he needed to play it. Pulls back, allows SK to push into him, and then just takes the CS under the tower there. And Mickey will be back down here in time. Looks like they might actually get an engaged with Crown Shot. Jump with Crown Shot, flash in from Dreams for the Devourer. Perks is going to get some more damage down. That's a summon to burn on the side of the Tarm. Kench. feel like Crown Shot could have played that a bit safer. Mickey was, yeah. comes back into bot lane. He's like, did you miss me? Very quick knockup, <laughs> very clean. And they f immediately force a flash out. Great stuff there from Mickey. Now Yankos turning his attention to the bot side of the map. Difficulty here for Crown Shot is he doesn't have the teleport, so he's going to try and clear out the wave. Self made forced away, dodges away from the EQ, but caps on his way up as well. <laughs> Self made with the fancy feet. Mickey's though with the chase with the grand entrance. Going to get the chase down. Self made continues to try and get away, but he doesn't really have anywhere to go. Dreams on his way with the devourer. The heal comes out as well. G2 once again investing a lot. And somehow Self made what? gets away. SK absorbing pressure. Pressure all over the map. Selfmade with a happy feet on that play right there. Dodging out, ducking and diving as well on Yankos. Breaking his ankles a little bit. Dreams coming through with the perfect hero save. And you mentioned Perks, the man himself playing in this game right here on the old server, did hype up Dreams and say he's a very mechanically strong champion uh, player. And, you know, Tom Kench, as we all know, very mechanically intensive. And right there, <laughs> perfectly timed the Devourer to save Selfmade. And also, think of the uh, resources invested by G2. Flash on Mickey, Flash on Perks. Selfmade didn't even have his Flash, yet due to some very great play, uh, was able to get out of that very sticky situation. So, uh, good demonstration of potential Lee Sin mechanics there from Selfmade. And, uh, SK right now have not conceded any early game advantages yep. to G2. Very few teams around the world can say that. I was just about to say that when you ripped it right out of my <laughs> mouth, Betty. This is exactly how we see G2 be such a dominant team. They just run around and they outplay you consistently. And they've looked to do that in this game and they've made the same moves, but SK have reacted really, really well, and most importantly, have not buckled under any of the pressure that G2 have thrown at them. And I think the important thing is, as they've 
been absorbing that pressure. They haven't really lost any gold either. If you look across the scoreboard, 200 gold between the two teams. Sacre is actually even with Wonder, even though he's 20 CS behind. And there's a lead for Crown Shot on that Ezreal down towards the bottom side. So SK have been able to find small advantages while G2 have been trying to make plays. But do remember that G2 were not actually known for their early game last split. It was their mid game that was their scariest point. Their ability to find. Ooh, oh, self -made. good. Counter flash there by Wonder. Very clutch stuff. But nothing really comes out off the back of it. Just a couple of summoners traded. But as I was saying, G2 are really scariest at their mid-game as Caps goes for an all-in. Yeah, Pyrian flashes away, uses the shield from the Pop Blossom, will escape. Caps didn't have to burn a flash of his own, and Yankos is waiting just around the corner. So Pyrian will back all the way back to his tier two and call for assistance from the highly mechanical Tom Catch. <laughs> That is one of the scariest things about picking Nico into Silas. It's a very, very strong ultimate to steal. I always feel like the best ultis to steal for Silas as a tier list, tier one, engage tools, and tier two, team fight tools. That has to be the strongest team fight ulti, one of them in the game, especially if you're playing Silas, who actually has like perfect setup for that ultimate, right, with the double dash. Doesn't get anything there, but we'll see later on into the game. That's going to be extremely scary. And with regards to SK, we, you just spoke about team fighting. They do have good team fighting of their own. Uh, one of the cool things that SK have in terms of their composition is a surprising amount of peel uh, and potential uh, and pick potential. Because when you have things like a Lee Sin and a Nico, you just land a single skill shot and you can actually catch a target completely unawares. And there's a lot of follow up from the side of SK. But in the event that G2 want to try and force a fight, you have the Tom Kench save, you have the Nico ultimate that can be used defensively, you also have Ezreal's mobility, and you have the Lee Sin kick. So SK actually have a lot of options to. Um, disengage from fights in the event that G2 want to try and force things in the mid game. What I think about the magical thing about Lee Sin as well is your ability to disengage with him is very easy. You just press R, get him out of there, sword. The ability to play make and to effectively play team fights is something that's very, very skill and player dependent. And for me, self made is one of the best Lee Sin players that we have here in Europe. This guy will absolutely find ways to make plays happen, to, to get those kicks off that completely change the fight. And now he's looking to repeat gank onto Wanda, yep. who doesn't have his flash from when he blew it before. Selfmade does have the ward as well. He's looking for that flank kick. Here, Here it is. Here we go. Jumps in with the ward. There's a the kick away. And Sacre straight into the slicing maelstrom. The kill for Selfmade. We highlighted him before the game even started. And once again, it's Selfmade making plays for SK. That was excellent casting. Foxtrot set up the narrative. It happened live in action. Beautifully. I, you realize really, that was really my voice. <laughs> <laughs> it was just everything. It was so good from the side of Foxtrot. Oh, dear, Absolutely mate. loved it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Selfmade, he makes things happen. He helps his team secure another kill uh, and he's just playing so much around the top side of the map we wanted to see him enable Sacre he's doing just that they had such great vision denial that the execution was flawless wonder with no flash there was very little that he could do it's a beautiful alley-oop into the um, slicing maelstrom as well right there pretty unplayable gank or undefensible gank there for wonder but he is Victor, he does have TP, so we will be back into lane to lick his wounds. But Pyrian's here, Tangle Barb's gonna connect, Wonder pops down the gravity field, Jankos on the chase here as well, the Pop Blossom used, Jankos able to jump in just in time, to counter teleport used, Shake Splitter from Pyrian, but they spot out the right one, and uh -oh. Zachary doesn't really have much here, doesn't have the ult, has no ability to chase down the rest of G2. Yeah, I think right here with Zachary not having his ult, he thinks maybe that Pyrian's gonna survive a little bit longer right there, but... Going down, not having anything to save his teammate. Pyrian thinking he was making the proactive play, but G2, right place, right time. Yeah, I think that was a really uh, massive misplay from the side of Pyrian. I think he TP'd top to try and help Sacre base, because he actually overstayed on the top side of the map, allowing Wanda to TP back into lane, and Yankos was in the vicinity. But then Pyrian made the choice to stick around, which ultimately cost him his life because his flash was not available. All while this has been happening, Dreams has been moving around the map to help the rest of his team, but that's left Crown Shot in a one versus two, and these tower plates are going over to the side of G2, and SK have to be very careful about these small mistakes because G2 as a team are very quick to convert small punishes into massive gold leads. And they're very fast at recognizing what the strong place on the map is and where they need to play at what time. Because as you can see right here, there's a huge kind of like vision wall at the bot side of this map right now for G2, which enables them to do exactly what they're doing right here, just run around this bot side. Oh, time catch all coming in here behind Janko. Something was on the chase as well. Yankos caught out by Crouch, but the three-man quickness. Perks on his way up. Caps already down so 
low. The Pop Blossom used as well. Cats used as well. Oh. But the Flash, Lash with the tongue from Dreams will take down Cats. Props to SK continuously finding picks of their own. We can celebrate G2 as much as we want, but SK are rivaling G2 in this early game, and it's off the back of Self Made. He was the one to find some great clutch plays on top of the fact that Dreams comes in with the flank on the Tom Kench to force Yankos this so into the top position. Sakurai. And now Sakurai going for the all-in. waited for the minion wave to almost die, knew Wonder had overstepped, and then just came in, sliced through the minions, and sliced through Wonder. G2 playing really far up in this game right now, and SK are actually punishing exceptionally well. This is something that I was very uh, impressed by them in the spring split, and it's good to see they haven't lost a beat coming into summer either. I was mentioning G2, they put this minion wave, uh, this vision line down in the bot side jungle, and this gives them the confidence to move into the bot side of the jungle to play around this dragon, but they don't expect SK to also be prepared to be ready to react to this, which is exactly what they do. and. Huge props to them and Sakurai. This is cheeky. Oh, yeah, he uses the proto belt to kill the minion. That means that the tower starts hitting Wonder. He then gets CC'd and it allows Sakurai to get that kill. Very well done. But yeah, that last play, all about dreams and self made. Self made gets that really great kick uh, onto Mickey to knock up caps to allow him to secure the kill. But then it wouldn't have happened if it weren't for dreams' flank behind the team. And SK are looking good. Yes, the gold lead isn't insurmountable, but. How many teams can say that they've done a great job of coming to the 50 minute mark with a kill lead, with this kind of advantage over G2? And uh, it's, it's great to see this level of performance from the side of SK. It definitely is. And your notes as well, we're praising SK a lot, saying that absorb pressure, they've been able to make the picks. We're not really putting G2 down too much. At some point, you expected this team to have a hiccup, to have a game where they maybe struggled in the early game. Here, they're still only 500 gold behind. They're still very well within reaching, uh, reaching point of this game. And until they really start failing consequentially, that's when we'll start to be a little bit worried. But Wonder caught out in the bottom lane once again. It's self-made and Sacre. It's all about them. And the double S is for SK. Get the kill. And the main reason I was going to say why we've been praising SK so much is because G2 have actually done a lot of what G2 always does. They have been so active in the early game and Yankos has been literally everywhere. Uh, yet SK have just done such a great job of punishing it. But now we're starting to see some of these big mistakes come out from Wonder overstepping. And we see Dreams posturing very far forward in this mid lane. He knows his jungler is there. But G2 is very aware of where Selfmade is, so they're not uh, over committing to the play. Oh wow. They're gonna go in with the Cataclysm in the middle lane. Not over committing, but they can commit just enough. Dreams goes golden. Crownshot doesn't really have any damage to follow this up. Dreams with the thick skin won't survive for long. Zachary will get a tower in the bottom lane, but G2 find a kill in the mid. That was hideous timing right there for Dreams. Just as self-made cues over the wall. Yankos pops out of his bush and takes him down. It's gonna be a tower as well. We're just praising the fact that you know, SK were able to react to what G2 were doing, but G2 do not relent as a team. They keep putting this pressure on you. And you can see at some point they're going to find something. And right now for SK, you know, they, they were able to get... I mean, they're in the lead this early game. I mean, yep. just, just because G2 got a kill, it's almost easy to say, yeah, the game's over now. <laughs> they got their second kill of the game, it's done. But SK have a very good team fighting comp. And in my opinion, that's one of the team comps that's the easiest to execute. And so I think, you know, if you can get this good early game, then realistically speaking, because of this draft, SK, this is a totally winnable game for them. Uh, and, you know, they don't have to do anything crazy to achieve that. Because remember, the SK's comp is not about snowballing, right? So even if you're just going even with G2, and sure, you're trading a couple of kills, you're trading towers here and there, like, SK is in a prime position to just force one good team fight, and then all of a sudden, that gold lead that is, what, a couple hundred, 1,000 right now, can snowball to 3, 4K. Once they're in that spot, G2 uh, have less options yeah. um, to try and fight back against SK, because G2 are honestly relying a lot on their team fight prowess, you know? They have the Jarvan, they have Victor, Sivir. Uh, Caps is only the really one that can look to play on side lane. And when we get to that point, we can explore how G2 try and leverage that. But for the time being, SK, very comfortable, very happy. And as we're like reaching this mid-game point, the game is not out of control, which is, yeah. which is ideal when you're playing against G2. It definitely is. G2 have a habit of just spiking their gold lead. Between 15 and 20 minutes last week against Splice, they got plus 7.8 thousand gold. In five minutes, they accelerated the game by almost 8,000 gold, which is absolutely incredible to me. Now, gold uh, pretty much equalizes that. Rift Hell takes down the tower in the bottom lane. SK 
you're getting two items complete on some of these carries as well. Crown Shot on his signature. Ezreal has the Trinity Force and the Mana Mune stacking up, so he's in a very strong spot. But the question is, can they hold back G2 as we get towards the mid game where G2 historically have been so strong? And this is one of those things where sometimes we see teams play a little too defensively because they have that level of respect for their opponents. They're a little too afraid sometimes to force a play because like, we're in a good spot now, let's just be patient, let's slow down. But again, Foxtrot, you already said it, G2 don't slow down. They're not a team that just gives you a moment of respite and you have to be willing to uh, block every single punch that they throw at you because if you make that one wrong move, that right hook is going to land and you're going to be down and they're not going to give you another opportunity to get up. I think for me, what I'm keeping my eyes on to that point is Sakurai on this Kennen because I was casting the E-Masters and he got the MVP of the entire tournament and he was just mega smurfing the entire way through playing for SK Prime. But with confidence as well as G2. Hux has to flash across cool. the wall of the chase, maybe on a Sakurai has a flank position. Nikki off the wrong side of this. Pyrian coming down towards the bottom side. Hux trying to get away. 200 HP on him. And the fight erupts up towards the jungle. Now, crown shot and crown shot. <laughs> yeah, it's Pyrian. Crown shot and Pyrian. <laughs> Looking for this Pump man. He's going in. Mickey lands the charm. Showed away the quickness. Oh. No six skin. Just deliver them the double. Two quick punches from G2 and SK are down for the count, but maybe they want to get up off the mat. Pyrian going forward, can't find any connections and SK have to retreat limping. Just as we were talking about perhaps over-respecting your opponents and playing a little bit too passive, the most over-aggressive play you could have cooked up happens for SK. Delivering Tom Kench. Wait. I'm going to call him a frog because Ender's uh, going to get triggered if I say that. <laughs> and the blind man into their deaths. I mean, you can't really give G2 an inch because they will take a mile. And right there, that was a bit of a blunder. So a lot of uh, a lot of things happened where we actually get to see a bit of classic G2 in this situation as well. Because SK had committed to the Infernal Drake. And what G2 will often do is when they only have one strong side of the map, they like to play towards it. So they actually grouped up as four members mid and then made their way up towards top. What they weren't expecting was SK to actually challenge them in their half of the jungle. Because SK actually had very little vision in that area of the map. Uh, they then force G2 down, they chase them down, they think, actually, this is a great fight for us, and then we see that Tom Kench play happen where he delivers the Lee Sin, and unfortunately, they walk uh, headfirst into a Rakan ulti and knockdown. Sakurai has Rabadons here, he's gonna go for the full fight, doesn't even need the Zonia's wonder. Ignite ticking, ticking, won't quite be enough. That's the confidence oh, of Sakurai ooh. right there. He's an exceptionally talented player, and buying Rabadons straight up second is... Well, confidence, it's I, I, I mean, don't it's, know. He is, he is the carry for this team at the moment. He's 2-0-2. Two, two. If he can 1v1 Wonder in a side lane, you eliminate one of the five best players in our league. You eliminate Wonder. Wait, SK are actually starting the Baron 22 minutes in. G2, they have one member dead. Wonder is alive and has TP. He's on his way. Keep an eye on Sakurai. Where is he right now? No slicing mouse, but has an elixir of sorcery as they look to the fight. Here's the teleport behind. Yakos goes in with the Cataclysm Mods. Crown shot. That's not the target you want. He can jump away. Pop Blossom from Pyrrhus. Not oh. quite. Gonna connect. Caps flashing away, but Sammy misses the Sonic Wave. Caps with the King Slayer trying to make the outplay. Dodging around. Caps can't survive any longer. One for one in the fight. That would have been so different if Sakurai had his Slayer Maelstrom. He bought a potion just to kind of juice himself up for that team fight because it was going to be so crucial for this game. Man, the Bulls on SK to make a call like that <laughs> is just against G2. I mean, you have to give huge respect for them to be able to do this. This team is not going to go down without a fight. Yeah, especially given that the uh, the cannon ultimate was unavailable. It was used bot to try and get that kill onto Wonder. And if they had killed him, this could have been a big deal. But here is a clear mistake from the side of G2. Medic, we talked a lot about it last game. If it's four people versus two people, the four people win. And G2's bot lane should have conceded that objective. They didn't. They try to fight. They lose their life. Now we're going to go back to the action. Slicing so Maelstrom comes out with the exhaust as well, but it's not going to be enough. Yankos and Wonder get the shutdown. Selfmade on his way down. Here comes the teleport as well from Pyrian. SK continue to take fight after fight against G2. But the battlefield is in favor of G2. You have to deal Mickey with the grand entrance. Doesn't have the does have the quickness back up. He's kicked back into the wall as perks and Yankos come in from the side. Dreams, this is Pyrian. Down towards the bottom side, gonna use the super soaker to slow down perks. Misses the tangle barbs and Yankos is there. Caps. Oh, Pyrian with the fancy feet. The cataclysm comes down in the end. Zonia's into pop blossom won't keep him alive for too much longer. As G2 equalized the scorecard at 7-7. And now all of a sudden G2 are the team with the gold lead. And 
we talked about it. You have to be able to keep taking these punches from G2 because the moment you make that big mistake, they snowball the game out of control. And while SK looked very good in the early game, they made a lot of great plays. A couple of small mistakes right now have given the ball back into G2's favor. But you've got to give a huge amount of credit to SK for looking for these proactive plays because you're not going to beat G2 just standing there and waiting for them to make a mistake. This team doesn't really make a huge amount of mistakes, honestly. Right now, an Infernal Dragon is spawning. You mentioned about how G2 played towards the strong side of the map. Right now, these guys are feeling very confident. They have their cooldowns. Uh, not quite available on Yankos for the engage. We have to think, you know, with the cooldowns of the Pop Blossom, of the Slicing Maelstrom, I'm not sure SK will want to try and fight this one. Infernal Dragon started up. SK, disagree with you here. SK want to fight this one. In. They're going for it. It's a shape splitter used. Infernal Dragon goes down. Mickey with the flank here. Pyrian immediately caught out and he's done. Pop Blossom can't come in, but Sacre now onto the back line. The Slicing Maelstrom catch goes gone with the Pop Blossom. Sacre taken out as well. One for two, one for three, one for four. G2 wiping the floor with SK. What a team fight from G2. SK oh, to oh, no. There it is. The ace for G2. Wonder picking that one up on the backside. SK, they wanted to contest the Infernal Dragon, but it wasn't a fight they could take. They're going to lose a lot more than just the Infernal, though, now. Foxtrot, you said it was risky. You said maybe they don't want to take this fight, but SK said, we've got to. We've got to go for this uh, play in order to regain control over the map. But look at Mickey. He's sitting in darkness. He finds such a massive taunt onto the SK lineup that they cannot land the big wombo combo because all of the members get picked off one at a time g2 come out on top they only lose the engager of mickey and oh crap i've been shot. watching some patrick recently i believe <laughs> wonder was just there like bait he was yeah. like oh no oh, i have overstayed out of position <laughs> but now there was four, three, five after being camped in the early game and g2 show us once again why they are the top team in our league credit to sk though the sixth place team from spring fighting against the most dominant team I think Europe has ever seen in terms of international success and showing that they can play with the big boys. If I am going to be an optimist here for SK, yes, they have kind of tripped over a little bit and fallen slightly on their face, cut some bruises abound. The thing is, we saw them lose a team fight and we're talking about how strong SK's team fight is. The way in which they played that fight is absolutely not how SK will find success because they were the ones getting engaged on. If SK want to win team fights, they have to be the ones engaging, and there's still a chance to do that, like a cheeky little bush. Here we go, here we go. Oh, out of darkness they come, and Sacre jumps up the back line. Pop Blossom used already. Perks is down, but Perks takes down the cannon with him. And now Dreams will fall as well. It's a one for two in favor of G2. Crowd shot trying to do what he can. Wonder down to half. Caps has the flank position here. Oh, he's just going in. He's going in. 1v3. Caps is looking for it. G2 are looking for the total knockout blow here. A haymaker from Caps could make it happen, but instead, Caps will act as the bouncer and force SK away. And while I like your optimistic approach, Fox Drop, unfortunately, the levels and gold are just too big in favor of G2. They're going to break into the base. SK holding the line for now. Oh, good flash away from self-made as the grand entrance comes in from Mickey. The inhibitor has to be the target here. Crown Shots use his arcane shift and Caps is on the chase. Caps can sense blood in the water. He takes one. Self-made chased up towards the top side as well. Mickey misses, but Wonder does not. The final shot into the heart of SK as self-made falls, as does the inhibitor. Up until the moment they lost, they were winning this game. You blink and you miss it. SK, 27 minutes into the game. G2 are running into the base. They're looking for the Nexus Towers. And shortly after, you have to think the Nexus as well. Five minutes ago, SK were 2,000 gold ahead. Now G2 with a 10,000 gold lead continue to push in. SK can do nothing against it. They tried their hardest, but G2 are going to remain undefeated. G2 now dancing around the Nexus, doing what they often do. Look for more kills. Will they be able to pad their KD out more? <laughs> the invisible is coming behind yes they will because dreams just feeds them a catfish on a platter the nexus is down to half but that's all the minions doing the work self-made trying to survive but he cannot stay alive g2 rounded out and a three and oh in summer split that was such a g2 game oh, <laughs> it was a really g2 game massive sk though yeah massive props to sk foxtrot you said it you said it a lot throughout the game 
They did so well, soaking so many of the punches from G2. Like this, this was just such a representation of a boxing match to me, where it was like the heavyweight was just throwing punch after punch, and SK did some really impressive stuff. But they dropped their guard for a brief yeah. second. All it takes yeah. is one punch. Yeah, it's all it takes. You blink and you miss it. I think if SK do that, I think the other thing I want to highlight for SK is not that they only absorb punches. They punched back so many times. Sacre and Selfmade, especially in that top lane, finding picks on Wonder, catching him out, getting SK a sizable gold lead, you know, one, two thousand in that mid game. Unfortunately, I think the biggest thing for SK was that you'll never beat uh, the boxer if you're always on the defensive. Yep. You have to land a couple of punches of your own and when SK did try, they just couldn't find that opening and that's not to say that there weren't those brief openings. They nearly got that kill onto Perks in the jungle. They nearly found these picks, but unfortunately for them, they weren't able to secure it and in the end, it was G2 that comes out on top and they did so in very dominant fashion. And even though there were, like, like you say, it looked like once G2 had that advantage, they just piled on them and it was kind of suffocating and the SK were just out of it. Even in that last team fight where they tried to set up the death bush, there was the, the cataclysm from Jarvan stopped Perium from getting into the middle yeah. of the G2 team comp to land the pop blossom. And it was just lots of little things like that where G2 just seemed to be... Like, if that play happens once, you think, wow, what a lucky ultimate. G2, these things happen every single game, multiple times during every single game. That actually, at this point, these guys are just really that good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've got to remember that SK is still a young team, still yep. a lot of room left to grow. Sakurai is still new uh, to the LEC stage, and uh, I believe SK currently sit at 1 and 2. So they shouldn't be too upset with losing to G2. Uh, they had a strong showing, and hopefully they can learn a lot from this. Um, I think, like, after you look at last week's performance where they kind of just beat Schalke after Schalke yeah. kind of gave it to them, they lost pretty handily to Fnatic. This performance is on a whole nother level for them. It's kind of like they found their next gear. And if they keep this sort of level up, they're definitely looking at one of those lower tier playoff spots, in my opinion. Uh, Foxtrop, something that you were talking a lot about this game was dreams. And while we did joke a little bit about the Tom Kench mechanics, I do think that he was very impactful in this game and a lot of the plays that he tried to make for the side of SK. And him in tandem with Selfmade, I think, overall had a very effective game and if they can keep this synergy up throughout the rest of the split then you're looking at SK being a strong contender to upset a lot of the, the favorites in our And I think it was Dreams' play that kind of threw the game a little bit as well when he delivered them into G2. Uh, but I, would, I like to think of it as if you have like an analogy you have like the block of marble and you chip away at it you create your masterpiece. Dreams, well the marble is a, it's a little bit big right now but you can chip away at that yeah. right you can't it's, it's a lot easier to like have that as your foundation and refine it rather than trying to uh, Turn some feathers into marble, yeah. Feathers into... What <laughs> feathers? Where the, I, just, I picked a random thing you can't make a good sculpture out of. I Dreams mean, has everything you need to make a good support player. He just needs a little bit of development, a little bit of growth. Yeah, you can't make I, a good support player out of feathers. It's more, it's, well, yeah, you know what? Rakan would disagree. <laughs> <laughs> you should know that. He's your main Did champion. you not watch <laughs> Mickey's game? <laughs> <laughs> there were tried, feathers I, I everywhere. trying to help. <laughs> You held team up on me. Guys, look, yeah, the action is over, but there's still one thing left to decide. Who's the key player of the game? Is it Yankos, Caps, or Perks? Head on over to Outlaw Esports on Twitter and make sure you vote. Mickey was robbed. I feel like he needs to be on that list. Told you can't make a good support player. <laughs> feathers, but it is. Uh, for me, Mickey was extremely impactful in a lot of those fights, and I was very impressed with how he played. Uh, I read a Reddit comment earlier in the day, which is like, we are very blessed with some of the Rakan players. We have Hillasang and Mickey. Both had great performances to date. So shout out to Mickey. I thought he had an excellent game. Today. What about Wonder for giving SK false hope? <laughs> Forcing to play over right, Now you're stretching. <laughs> he did have. A, he got a triple kill in one of the mid-game fights, right? That works. Oh man! Just look at the KDAs. Who had the most kills on that team? It was Wonder. Wonder gets it. Laura <laughs> sitting down with Sakura and Selfmade. Let's see what they have to say. Thank you very much, guys, and thanks to you too for joining me after the game. You gave them a hard time. So Sakura, how was it playing against G2 for the first time? Uh, the game felt like we are under a lot of pressure, but we still try to make some plays, try to make the game as long as possible, so... Yeah, you guys were really good at anticipating what G2 wanted to say, especially... Uh, oh, you, self-made. So how were you so good at anticipating everything G2 was doing in the early game? Well, before we even went to this game, I just told my coach that I want to take this in German matchup, which happened in this game. Then we drafted basically top set oriented uh, 
duo, which is Lissing Cannon, and we tried to play as much as possible there. I think we executed it pretty well at the early stage of the game, even though I went kind of behind in CS and in experience. We got some kills, then Wunder got all killed by Sakra, but it felt like we were just really lost on the map, and you could see that they are much more experienced team than us, and they just fought macro us really hard. What was the plan coming up against G2 today? What mindset were you on? Well, you know, we went into this game without really any pressure since they are much better team than us. Everybody expects, expects them to win and nobody expects us to win. So if we win, it would be like great for us, surprising for other people. And if they win, it's like people expected this already. It was a great showing from you guys either way. Now, Sakre, what do you think about your debuts in the LEC? Um, personally, not too happy so far because Why? I know, I mean, I know I can do much better, obviously, and still, I feel like I'm still getting used to the stage, but I feel like it's already improving compared to last week, so I'm not too worried about it right now. How about yourself, Matt? Is your new mate worth ganking top lane? Mm, can you repeat the question? <laughs> is your new mate worth ganking top lane? How good is he? I think Sakura is a really great player and he has a lot of potential. Like he's still a rookie here, and like there is a lot to learn for him, for us as a team, like for every player there. Like basically, our whole team is still a bunch of rookies, right? We are there only second split, so we still are doing not that bad. I think other teams were losing to G2 in 18 minutes. What, what do you guys need to focus on to get better? Because you had a great first showing, and you were saying, Sakre, that you wanted to improve on something. So, on a personal level, what do you want to focus on to get better? I mean, I don't feel like there is too much to focus on personally. But as a team, obviously, we just started, and it feels like we're still exploring and trying to find what's the best way for us to play the game right now. So that's one aspect we basically are still trying to improve, right? But personally, I feel like I'm up there with all the other players in the league. I don't feel like I'm worse than any other, any other player, right? But I would obviously like to make it that I'm one of the best ones by the end of the split. Now, Selfmade, you were coming back from last split. You were here in spring. You had an amazing split. So what did you focus on during between the splits, I'm sorry, to get better and improve personally as a player? Um, I couldn't hear the question again. Sorry, can you repeat? Just, just take the thing out if it's bothering you. Okay. Yeah. So what did you think about during the um, between two splits to get better as a player? What did you focus on? What did they focus on to be better as a player? Well, I think the biggest problem that I have right now as a player is my macro name knowledge, right? I mean, it's also a team thing, but I don't really feel like I improved a lot since Spring Split till now. So I'm still looking forward to work hard this Split and see what the time will bring me. Would you say that the meta fits the way SK is playing right now? Mm, as we can see, it doesn't really, right? But I think it's just because we are not playing good. It's like I can't put a meta as an excuse, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we just have to get better. I mean, you had a great split on your first showing during split split. So what can we expect from you guys in summer? Where do you want to end? Well, for sure, like last split, make it at least to playoffs. But I would say semi-finals or finals would be something that would satisfy me a lot. And for sure, it would be the same for the whole team. Sakre, any last words on that? Uh, last words? Yeah. Or just looking about back at the same said. question? Yeah. Sorry? About what he said. Where, oh, where about, do you go? about what he said. I mean, obviously, making it higher compared to Spring Split would be the first goal. But the end goal would obviously be trying to make it to top three, if possible, right? Well, I wish you very good luck on that. And thank you so much for joining thank me you. after the game. Thank you. And to wrap up the day, let's send it over to Shaxo PGL.